everyone. It is Emmy. Today is April 24th, Wednesday, 2019, and I am here to check on my bees. I've been away for two weeks on a trip right before I left, the day before I left, actually. I checked on all of my hives. So last time, I switched the hive bodies. I put the brood nest down below. I moved the drawn frames up above. I had beginnings of nectar and pollen stores and put those on top of all of my hives overwintered. Yay! Super happy about this. By the way, this is my third season of beekeeping, so I am no expert by any means, but I'm certainly learning a lot. So my biggest concern is my hive number three, my Reba Grant Queen. It is the largest of all the three in terms of population, and when I went in last time, I noticed the beginnings of some queen cups. No eggs, no larvae, just some queen cups. I noticed some drones in some of the burr comb, which means they have resources and are confident and strong enough to actually start producing drones. So all of those signs indicate that they are prime for swarm season. We're coming into it now. Before we left on our trip, the grass was brown. It is now green. And we have the beginnings of dandelions. So dandelions around here, which is New England, I live in Rhode Island is an indication of the spring flow or the beginning of spring of flow and that's when the bees start planking about they're probably thinking about it before probably thinking about it in winter time but uh, that's when they are going to attempt to swarm and swarming of course is when half of the population of bees leaves with the original queen mother to go create a new nest leaving behind half the population and queen cells which, which will develop into a new queen which is great in some sense for the bee population at least the feral bee population or some lucky beekeeper that catches the swarm but it's not so great for honey production because now you have a delay in your hive because they're waiting for their new queen she has to get mated and of course you have fewer workers certainly not a bad thing in the big scheme of things that means the population is healthy they are big and confident enough to leave but it does put a wrench into things in terms of the amount of honey that you'll be able to harvest theoretically but these other two hives this hive, which is my number two hive, I'm also concerned about. I want to go in there to see how the queen is doing. <laughs> if you missed my last video, I'll put a link in the description to that one. I nearly beheaded her, so <laughs> I want to make sure she's doing all right. I checked in the next day, and she seemed to be doing great. I actually saw her sticking her abdomen into cells, which indicates she was laying, but whether or not she was successfully laying, I won't know until now. And I'll know that by seeing new eggs and also her brood pattern in terms of capped brood. If she's nice and solid brood pattern, then I know she's laying well. So number one hive, I'm also gonna check, just do a quick little check and see how they're doing. That is a daughter from the original queen I had when I started beekeeping two seasons ago now. I'm coming into my third season. I'm gonna see where they are in their swarm preparations. If they are really advanced, then I can do a split, hopefully, they are not and if they are not my number one goal is to find my queen cage her and then remove every single queen cell then put my original queen back but first I need to find my queen so that is how I'm going to manage number three hopefully I'm here soon enough if there are queen cells that are very developed I will try to split them in the hopes that that will tamp down their swarming urge but yeah, won't know till we actually get in there. I'm hoping that it's not too advanced in the terms of stages of wanting to swarm because then of course it's harder to keep them from leaving. Okay, let's get in there. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is go straight down to the bottom. That's pretty heavy. So I'm tidying up because when I put the boxes on top of each other, I don't want to inadvertently squish anybody. She'll go all the way to the bottom. Let's see what's going on. <sighs> oh, lots of drones there. And while we're doing that, we're gonna look for Varroa, because Varroa loves drones. Not seeing any Varroa, which is great. I did give these girls a treatment in March. Not seeing any varroa, which is good. Varroa mites prefer drones because they take longer to develop. Of course, they're bigger bees as well. I'm seeing some capped brood here. Now, I'm looking for the queen. She should have a big blue dot on her, but I haven't spotted her in a while. Lots of good pollen stores here. 
So this is the outside of the brood nest. You don't expect to see queenie on this one. I see a good laying pattern. Drones on the bottom. Oh, I see eggs. Very nice laying pattern. I see honey reserves on the side. It's nice, still looking for my queen. I see a drone. Alrighty, so I placed the hive onto a new hive stand and got my first sting of the season. Congratulations, Emmy. Now I'm gonna look for queen in here. Nice laying pattern, solid. A couple queen cups here on the bottom. I'm gonna take those, look at those, see what's going on there. They look empty. Empty, 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 empty. There's honey on the outside of these frames, which tells me they have enough stores, enough food, they're not starving. We have a queen cell. Look at that. That, my friends, is a queen cell. Right there. Right there. Imperative that I find my queen because that is pretty developed. I would say that's three days old, four days old. Checking the third hog body for the queen. Lots of cups down here. This one has an egg in it. Yep. So these girls are definitely taking a high tail in it. Oh, and this one's got some jelly in it. So this one's filled with royal jelly right here. Right there. Definitely thinking of going. So what I'm doing is just pinching these off, but I still have to find my queen. You can see a drone ready to hatch. See him emerging? Right there, making his way out. Alright, still on the look out for my queen. Ah, she's so dodgy. I found her. Right there. She had a bright blue mark on her, but she's it's gone now. So it's been really hard to find her, but I found her now. So I'm gonna scoop her up. And then I'm going to shake all these frames and get rid of all these one cells. There she is. Beautiful girl right there. So I'm going to mark her so I can spot her easier for next time. Give her a little nice blue dot again. She's beautiful blue again. There she is. So that was great. I finally found my queen and I marked her. So that explains why I couldn't find her before because the mark that she had previously rubbed off. So now she's remarked. I did her in her bright blue and now I'm going to shake every single frame and squash every single queen cup, queen cell, everything because now I've got my queen isolated. Yes! To clear a frame, put them down below, shake them off in there. That reveals everything on the frame and any potential queen cell. So, just drone on that one. Nothing. Queen cells tend to be at the bottom, but super seizures sometimes come on the sides. So, <laughs> so I'm done checking out all the frames. I'm gonna let my little queen go. There she is. She's a beauty. There she goes. Down to the depths. As you may have noticed, I put on some gloves. Those girls were getting feisty, poor things. I was wrecking up their house. I received four stings from that hive <laughs> check, but I did find my queen. I did remove any signs of any queen cups, queen cells, which was great. Marked my queen, so it has been a successful day. So this hive still has sugar. I'm gonna remove all of that. So these hives are a little bit smaller, so I'm not expecting them to be so ganky. We're excited to swarm as my big guy, my big hive. Okay, I marked her just two weeks ago with a bright red dot. She should be easy to spot. Oh, and she's starting to lay in here. This is all fill of brood, which is baby bees. Don't see her. I see some queen 
cups here. I'm gonna eliminate these cups right here. Nothing's in them, no eggs. So even though I said these ones are smaller, these ones might be thinking of skedaddling too. Okay, very nice laying pattern. Don't see any queenie. Oh, see some cups. No signs of supersedure though, which is good. That means my queen, I didn't, that means she's still viable. If she was compromised, the bees would have tried to replace her. So, shake this frame off here. And I'm gonna clean off the bottom of this frame. Ah, there's my queen. She's right there. Red dot, so I'm gonna cage her and proceed to shake all the frames. See what's going down here. Eggs, eggs. No queen cells or cups. Okay, honey frame. So, plenty of stores. And plenty of pollen. These girls are looking tip top. There she is. Straight down. Okay, last hive. Same dealio. Find the queen. Flow is starting, the nectar flow is starting, so we don't need a, an extra feed anymore. So if you can see in there, it's like a little grain of rice. So those will be drones or males, and if they have enough resources to make drones, that means the hive is in pretty good shape. Like always, I like to remove number two. And looking for my queen. She too should have a nice red dot. So, spot eggs. So she was here recently, which is good. Very nice laying pattern. Beautiful. The brood is here. This is the baby developing bees. Then we have some pollen here, and then we have some nectar, which indicates the girls have enough resources. Great. Oh, there she is. She doesn't have a dot. Look. There's two queens. Holy There's two queens. Look at there and there. Two queens, oh my God. So this hive continues to confound. So this is the queen that I marked last week and I remarked her because already her mark was coming off. So I gave her a little bit more red. Now, right next to her on the same frame, I noticed another big bee and it was another queen. Now she's right there and I'm going to grab her and mark her with a green dot and this is going to be my green and red queen hive. A Christmas hive if you will. Got her by her wings. Michael Palmer calls those her handles. Green paint. There she is. And the bees seem to be responding to both queens. They crowd around both of them so that is an indication that they're both laying. And, uh, hmm, I'm going to release this queen. Beautiful. Well, ain't that interesting. So beekeeping always <laughs> continues to be humbling. I very happily spotted all three queens today and remarked my number three Reba Grant queen, saw my two red queens, and then I spotted another queen in my first number one hive, which I marked with a green dot, so she matches the green entrance. Very interesting. Both queens had very large abdomens. Both queens seem to be getting attention from attendants, so I'm assuming that means both of them are laying. Um, it's too early for swarm cells, for that to be a virgin queen. I was in this hive two weeks ago, didn't spot, didn't spot any signs of queen cups, and in fact this time I did not either. I scraped off all burr comb, and I will come back in another five days and check all three hives again. Hopefully I'll be able to spot the queens, and then again I'll shake all the frames and see if I can spot any queen cups and remove all of them, and then again, trying to thwart all attempts of swarming. So. There you have it. It's Emmy. It's April 24th, 2019. This is my third season of beekeeping and I continue to learn something with each hive check. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>